Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part one of my Cascading Style Sheets tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you absolutely every single way to interact with Cascading Style Sheets and explain everything you can possibly do with them. Well, the normal way that people bring style sheets into their HTML files, and, and all they do is they just style all of the different text that you should have seen in either my HTML tutorial or my XML tutorial. And also, this all is a continuation of my web design and programming tutorial. I provide links to all of those on the screen right now. But the normal way people bring them in is they type in link, type is equal to text forward slash CSS, REL equals style sheet. And all this is doing is telling the browser that this is a style sheet. And then of course, hreference is going to point at the style sheet, right like that. And of course, we want to close it off like this. So this is the normal way. So you have a style sheet that's just full of a bunch of descriptions of what you want your tags to look like, and they are in an outside file, and this is how you link to that outside file. What I'm going to do here in this tutorial is instead of jumping back and forth between multiple different files at once, because I don't think that's really important, is I'm going to use the style tag. Now this is frowned upon, but just understand that for example, if I wanted to make all of my body tags and all anything, basically any text that lies within the body green, this is how I would do it. And the style sheet that I just showed you would be a full of a bunch of these things. No style tag, just a bunch of these definitions. And this is exactly how you define all these things. So let's say that I want any text inside of my paragraph tags to be the color purple. Well, this is exactly how I would define that. And then I'd close off that definition. And then I can also define styles for multiple different tags all at one time. So here I'm defining styles that I want to be attributed to all of my H1 tags, emphasis and bold tags. And you can see where you normally define all these things is inside of the header file, just before that place right there. And normally people style, put all their styling information after they define the title. Okay, and you could also define font family. And you, here what you do is type in specifically what you would like to see first, use Times New Roman. And if that's not available, then you would prefer to use Georgia. And if that's not available, you want to use serif, which is always available. And this is sans serif right here. This is a sans serif font. See, there's no little hooks on there. And we'll get into them more of this here in a second. And then you close that off. And then here also I'm going to define that I want all my anchor or my links to have the font family. Rodania, preferable. And if that's not available, Arial, which is almost always available. And if that's not available, then sans serif. And if none of these are available, which these last two are always going to be available, the default that the user or the browser setup is going to be used. And then, after you define all those in the style tags, you want to, of course, close off that area of your definition for all of those guys. All right, now I'm going to demonstrate exactly what the cascading part of style sheets means. It's basically based off of the fact that if you're defining that you want all of your text to be green and you're using the body tag and the body tag surrounds everything because that's what the body is, it surrounds everything that's displayed on the browser, that means by default now all of your text is going to be green unless another tag that lies below this is defined with another color. So for example, at this point, everything on the screen, all the text is going to be green, unless text is inside of a paragraph tag, and then it's going to be purple. However, let's say that I would go up here and I would put font family inside of body and define that as Verdania, but I do not define a font family inside of the paragraph tags. Well, what this is going to do is it's going to override the color green and make all the text inside of paragraph tags purple. However, this definition is going to cascade down into all of the other definitions. So by default, everything else is going to be Verdania until you get to this point where they define a new font family. So everything cascades. All the rules that are not overridden by tags that lie under simply cascade. So this will be font family Verdania, but this has changed, so now it's going to be Times New Roman. And then this link, which hasn't been touched at all, except for the fact of if it's in a paragraph tag or in a body tag, is going to be by default Verdania. And this technically doesn't have to be here at all because it's not affected by any of these other definitions. So I'm just going to show you here how all these different things will change. So I got the body tag, and it's saying all the text must be green. And I'm just going to type in here body text. And then I'm going to define a paragraph tag. This is some text. And I'm going to throw a break statement in here. And then I'm going to use the italic tag. Close that off. Break H1. And if you can remember from before, 
I went in there and defined some different rules for H1 tags. And here I'm going to create a link. This is bold, and then I'm going to close off the paragraph tag altogether. More body text, and then I'm going to come up here and throw another break statement in. If I save that, jump over here, reload it, you're going to see some things happen. Okay, so you saw what I did there on that side, so I'm going to go over some of the definitions and explain what exactly is happening here. Because cascading of rules work differently based off of whether the tag is what we would call a block element, and a paragraph is a block element, and if you didn't see the previous HTML tutorial, what separates what are called block elements from what are called inline elements is the fact that a block element will force a new line to occur where inline statements will not. So for example, a link is an inline statement. You can see that it did not force a new line. And let me just go in here to reinforce that fact. I'm gonna come in here and delete that. File save it and watch, this is gonna jump up there. See, jumped up. Why? Because inline statements do not force a line break. And just so you are 100% positive of what is a block statement, I'm gonna show you every single one of them. Block quote, div statements, which I'm gonna get into here in a second, definition lists, forms, all the h tags, I'm just going to put h1 down there, or I can just put h tags, horizontal rules, which draws a line and forces a new line, ordered lists, paragraphs, as we've already discussed, tables, and unordered lists. That is the complete list. That is every single block element. If a tag is not one of these guys, that means it is an inline. That's it. These are the only block elements that exist in HTML code. So what's going on here? Let's go back up to where we defined what we're doing. All right, we said we want all of our body text to be green as long as it's not contained within a paragraph tag. Well, we can see here body text is green. But then what goes on here? Why is this purple? Well, the reason why this is purple is because it's inside of a paragraph tag. See, this is some paragraph text, this is italic text, this is, but then wait a minute, why does the H1 tag show up as green? The reason why are the block elements, and you, if you look here closely, body is not a block element. Whatever you define inside of body will extend to every single tag. But if you use one of those block elements, such as that here where we define everything contained in the paragraph should be the color purple, it does not affect any of the other H1 tags or other block elements that are contained within the paragraph tag. So just because you define a rule in a paragraph tag, that rule is not going to extend to any elements or any tags that are contained within that paragraph tag if they are block elements or one of these guys right here. Hopefully that makes sense. And on top of that, even though this is supposed to be purple, it isn't. And you would be maybe asking, well, why is this text not purple? Because it's not contained inside of one of the block elements. Well, as soon as it hits a block element, it ceases to pay attention to any rules that are defined inside of the paragraph tag. So it hits this H1 tag rule right here, and it ceases to care about the fact that paragraph tag should be purple. So cascading works to a certain extent right up until the point in which it hits a block element and then it ceases to work. However, since you did define that you want the font family to be Verdania, and this is an inline statement and not a block statement, it goes back to using the rules of paragraph, meaning that the color should be purple, and also that the font used is Verdania or sans serif as you can see right here, and right here you see what are serif fonts. See those little guys hanging off the side of the letter? Those are serifs. These are sans serifs, as are everything else there on the screen. So that is how cascading works in cascading style sheets. Everything just falls down to all the tags that are underneath of it as long as it is not a block element. If it is a block element, it follows whatever rules are defined inside of body or any rules that are defined for that specific block element and ignores everything else. So let's come in here and let's say that a customer says to you that they want their H1 tags to be different colors depending upon what title they are being used on. Well, it's real easy. I'll just describe to you how to make multiple versions of one individual tag. So what we're gonna do is within the style tags here, we're gonna define that all of our H1 tags should be a font family, times, new, Roman, Georgia, or serif. And also let's say that our customer wants all of the font sizes for all H1 tags to be 14 pixels. Okay, super. 
So let's close that off. Now if we want to create specific H1 tags that are going to have, for example, the color purple, what we do is we just give them a special name. So we type in H1 followed by purple. Now you could have this word here be anything. It doesn't have to be purple. It's just a specific name that I'm giving or a specific rule that I'm defining for any H1 tags that I want to be purple. And then I just simply type in this, right like this, and close that off. And if we also want to have H1 tags that are green, super, no problem, color, green. All right, now down inside of the HTML itself, if I wanted to actually define all these different guys, I could have my H1 tag. Let's just call it regular H1, right like that. Then I could define my special H1 tag by typing in class and then putting in purple. This purple is a reference to this name that I put right here, not to this then close that off and here I'm going to type in purple h1 and then you close it off with a regular h1 tag you don't have to type purple in again and then I could type class is equal to green and if I file save that jump over here you can see that they showed up and let me just zoom in here you can see here that it showed up as black here it showed up as purple and here it showed up as green and just to prove that these have no meaning I'm going to call this red and then I'm going to call this red file save now of course you wouldn't do this in the real world but you see it still stayed as purple, okay? And what's really neat is you can also create a generic class that isn't tied to any specific tag, and then you can easily use this special class that you create to define other tags. So, and how you do this is, let's say we wanted to be able to easily define any text contained within a tag to be both purple and a serif font. You would just put a dot and then put a name in there of any type that you want. And we're gonna type in font family, and we're gonna get it out of it bunch of different types of serif fonts and also purple and then we're going to close that guy off and now you can easily turn any one of these tags like this let's just say we come in here and we go h1 you can see this has no reference to h1 tags at all i can just get them into the class area if i type in purple serif which is the name that i defined right here if i'll save it jump over here you can see that it showed up as a purple h1 tag so those are all the different ways you can define classes and define all the different types of styles, how you link to outside CSS style sheets, and how you can also embed, and a whole bunch of other different ways you can define the different roles that you want to use. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you every single font property that you can change and use in cascading style sheets. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. And I also provide a link in the underbar to a text version of this whole entire tutorial. Till next time.